In this video, you will see Kelly and Maria working on the following problem. A rock is thrown into a pond, creating a circular ripple that travels outward. As the ripple travels, it displaces sediment on the bottom of the lake. R of t is the radius of the ripple, t seconds after the rock hits the surface of the pond. V of r is the volume of displaced sediment from a ripple that has radius r. The total displacement is given by d of t equals v of r of t. Determine the average rate of change of d with respect to t between t equals 1 and t equals 3, and then for t equals 1 and t equals 4. As they work, consider the understandings they express and determine if their reasoning is valid. So we want the average rate of change. Yes. Which is the change in y over change in x. But I guess in this case it would be the change in delta or delta d of t. Yeah. Over the change in time. Yes. Okay. So I feel like we have a lot of information. Yeah. Um, maybe we should just try to fill out the formula and see how it goes. Yeah. Okay. So you want to do the first one between 1 and 3? Yeah. Between t equals 1 and t equals 3? Okay. D of 4? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then D of 3, you would just get 30. So you would... Wait, I don't know how you got yeah. that. Can I show you? Yeah. Okay. We can do, let's see, D of 3. And D of T is defined as V of R of T. So in this case, T is 3. So you put a 3 there. Uh, so since it's a composition of functions, you want to do the inside one first. Oh. So R of 3, so we're looking at 3. R of 3 would give us 6. So now we have v of, we can replace r of 3 with 6. Okay. And v of 6, we know, just gives us 30. So. Oh, okay. d of 3 is just 30. Okay. So we get a 30 here. And then d of 1. Let's change these. So d of 1, looking at v of r of 1. So r of 1 would be 2. And v of 2, well, do you want to do this part? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it would be 10. So v of 2 is a 10. Okay, be careful, though, because v of 2 is 10, not d of 2, because we're still evaluating d of 1. Oh, so v of, wait. Oh, so d of 1. Yeah, I just, I didn't write it, okay. but we were originally doing d of 1 now. Okay. So when you got, when I got 2, I had just done the R of 1 to okay. get 2. And replaced R of 1 with 2. So now we're on V of 2. Okay. Is V of 2 is 10. Mm hmm Okay. So going way back, D of 1 is 10. Right. So that we can plug that in there. So then we have 10 and 3 minus 1. We have 20 over 2. Mm-hmm. We get 10. So that would be 10 volume per second. So whatever the volume is per second. Okay. So it's changing by 10 every second. Or the volume is changing by 10 every second. Right? Okay. Yeah. The displacement. Okay. okay. So, so now we're looking at between t of 1 and t equals 4, right? Yeah. So same thing. All right, so what would you get for d of 4? Um, so, okay, so I would start in this column. I would find 4. So I get 8, and then I go to 8 in this column. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So your final answer should be 40. So d of 4 is 40. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we already did d of, did 1, of 1, so. So that's 10. So we get 3 over 3, which is, again, 10. OK, so the rate of change is the same between the two intervals. That's interesting. Yeah. Does that mean it's constant? 
I, would, I guess so. I don't know if it's going to stay that way, but it looks like it is for at least between T of 1 and T equals 3 and then T of 1 and T equals 4. Yeah. Um, hmm. Wait, you know, if you look at these columns, mm -hmm. this one is all multiples of 2, and then this one is all multiples of 5. Oh. Like 2 times 5 is 10, but I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Yeah, I'm not sure. But that is interesting that it works out like that. Yeah. In this video, Kelly and Maria computed the average rates of change, but wondered whether these rates were actually constant and whether they came from multiplying 2 by 5. We'll explore these ideas in upcoming videos.